I'm Jason. I teach non-technical people how to build apps without writing one line of code. This is part two of a mini series called how to build a Twitter clone in Bubble. The last video, we built a simple sign-in login screen. We then added a new screen called feed and redirected our login process to go to that new screen. Today, we're gonna focus on a profile page and build that out before we move on to the feed page. If you remember from the last video, you can create a new page using the drop down in the top left. If I click here and say add new page, we're going to call this profile. First thing we want to do is add a title. So I'm going to grab a text element, drag it onto the screen, and we'll call it profile and we'll make it a little bigger. What else does a profile page need? Let's take a quick look at Twitter's profile page and find out. Here's my Twitter. I'm going to click on profile and edit profile. Now we want to build a page that kind of looks like this. A few things we need will be a profile picture a name or a username, a bio, location, website, birth date, just a few of the fields here that Twitter has. Uh, so let's head back to Bubble. And before we add these new fields to our profile page, we should add them to the database. So we're going to click on data and then make sure we're in data types. And you can think of a data type like a type of list. Bubble comes preloaded with a user's data type, uh, so we're going to use that. Each user of our app will have their own Twitter profile page with separate data. They'll all have their own username and their own bio, so it makes sense that we uh, use this user table. So we'll click create a new field. Now the first one we wanted was username. This is going to be a text field. We also wanted bio. website and profile picture. Now this one is going to be a different field type. It's going to be an image. Okay, we've updated the database. Now let's go back into design mode and work on this profile page. The first thing we need to do here is set the content type of the page. So if I double click on the whole page itself, here's this option here, type of content. And we are gonna pick user. The reason we want user is because we will have user data on this screen and this will make it easier to pass data, like which user should load to the screen when we navigate to it. Now if we look at Twitter again, Notice there's some text inputs on the screen here. So we want to set up something similar. So we're going to go into our element list here and look for input right here. And the first one we want is username. So I'm going to set the initial content to current users username. This is going to allow this text input to load this the data of the username field when we navigate here, if it exists. And if we take a quick look at the preview of this page, notice it's just a text input. We don't know what it is. The user doesn't know what it is. So we actually want to add a text element here as well and put a quick caption. Okay, next thing we want is the bio. This is going to be a multi-line input because it's going to be a little bit bigger. And we wanted the website field, so I'm going to copy and paste. Okay. 
I'm going to change this content to website. The last field we need is profile pic. And maybe I want to put that on top. So let's move a few things around here. Now this is going to show a dynamic image. If it exists, so we want to actually show the user's profile picture here. Cool, so let's preview that. So we have our image uploader username by a website. We don't have any way to save this though. See on Twitter, there's a save button. Uh, so we want to do something similar. So let's grab a button element from the screen and call it uh, save. Oh, that's a little too big. That's a little too small. Something like that should be good. And if you double click it again, we're going to start a workflow. And remember, here we can add actions to this button so we can tell it what to do when the user clicks it. So we're going to go to data things, make changes to a thing. And the thing we want to change is the user. And we're going to make a few updates to fields and the user table. One would be username. So what do we want to change the username to? Um, here you'll notice we don't actually know which one it is because we didn't name our text inputs. So that's why it's important to name your text inputs. So let's go back to design mode. We want it to be whatever's in this text input. So let's change this. We can name it up top here. We'll call it username TI for text input. Do the same for bio. Now, if we go back to our workflow, see, we, we want username TI. That's what we're going to change the username to. So we're also going to do the bio. And we want the value of that text input. So that's set up. Um, however, right now we don't have any way to get to this profile page. So I'm going to head back to feed page. And we'll work on this one, this page in the next video. But for now, I just want to have some way to get to the profile page. So for now, let's just throw a button on the screen called edit profile. And we're going to start a workflow here. We're going to navigate to our new screen called profile. And here we're going to send data to that screen. We're going to send the current user so that it loads the current user. And let's just fix up that button a little bit. All right, let's test that out from the feed page. And now we can edit our profile. I'm going to add an image. And save. Then we're redirected to our feed page. And if we go back to the profile, our information is saved here. So I'm going to stop here for this video. But tune into the next one. And we're going to give the user the ability to tweet and see a feed of tweets from other users. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like this video, let me know and I'll start making more. Thanks and I'll see you on the next one.